Our adventure started out in the Mojave Desert where summertime temperatures can top 100 degrees and winters can fall into freezing. We explored old mines and the historic prospector's camp known as Bickle Camp. We thought it would be a relaxing adventure as we were driving on well-maintained BLM roads, but we soon found ourselves on a black diamond Jeep trail, and instead of turning around, we proceeded all the way down the canyon until it spit us out at this dry lake bed. The desert sun was scorching hot at over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and my truck, once a symbol of freedom, would soon be helplessly stuck in this hot, sticky mud. Would I find a way out, or would I be left in the desert stranded? What's going on you guys? So today I'm out in the Mojave Desert. We're gonna do some exploring and there's a mine right here we're gonna check out. We're gonna go check out this camp up the road in a little bit. Uh, yeah, and then today we're gonna to get up into the mountains. Uh, the map said about 8,000 feet of elevation, which we're trying to get out of this heat. It's been uh, hard to find a place to camp that's not uh, burning hot. So, it's about 90 degrees out right now. It's about nine in the morning down here in the Mojave Desert. Uh, but I'm hoping at, you know, 8,000 elevation that uh, it gets a little cooler. So we're gonna go check out this mine and we'll catch you guys a little bit later. Check out. Besides it being already 90 degrees Fahrenheit at nine o'clock in the morning, the desert was beautiful this morning. The skies were blue, the roads were sandy smooth, and I was happy to have my wife and my dog Daisy to be joining me for this adventure. Today we would be exploring the El Paso Mountains, which are located in a gold district within the Mojave Desert, hours north of Los Angeles. We stopped to check out the Holy Ash Mine, and I later discovered it was a pumice mine in the early 1950s. I read online there's there's a guy that lives here, but maybe not during the uh, hot summer months like this. So I might check it out, check it out with the drone, and then uh, we're gonna get out of here. Like thousands of people before him, Walt Bickle came to the El Paso Mountains in the 1930s in search of gold. The camp came under scrutiny in 1986 when the BLM started to rid the desert of cabins and camps. Walter Bickle lived in the Mojave Desert for over 50 years. In 1986, Bickle suffered a stroke and Bickle's friends and other interested parties intervened. They met with the BLM officials in March of 1989 and the BLM agreed to leaving the site as it was, as a museum. And Walt Bickle lived to see his camp saved. Walt Bickle died in 1996, leaving his son-in-law, Larry O'Neill, as caretaker of the site. The desert is beautiful in its own way, right? I like the forest, but it's pretty uh, deserted out here. We just came up to these, these, uh, these hills. Check it out. It's pretty steep. You 
You good? So we decided to uh, take another way out than the way we came in and uh, it's called Last Chance Canyon. And uh, I have an air down and it's just like rocky the whole way and we're hungry. And, but I'm gonna air down the tires that way the ride doesn't uh, suck the whole way down. And then uh, hopefully we'll get to the trailhead where we planned on going today. It's already 12 o'clock, but uh, we'll see you guys soon. All right, so, while the tires are hopefully not going too far, you go to Sprout, you guys gotta get this stuff. You guys saw it in the last video. Strawberry lemonade, no sugar, added organic. These are all right. We'll see you guys when we get to the trailhead and we're gonna go to a place called Jawbone Canyon. It's gonna take us out of this hot desert and into, hopefully, cooler mountain area so see you guys hopefully at 8,000 feet elevation most of last chance canyon was owned by the blm but in december 2022 most of the land was transferred to the state park which tripled the state park size there are still three blm land locations inside last chance canyon and it is still open for recreational use hiking camping and four-wheel drive vehicles are permitted we enjoyed this last section of the canyon, but little did we know this would be the calm before the storm. All right, you guys, so it's been an hour and a half and uh, we definitely messed up trying to take a different route out of here. We should have just gone back the way we came because it's been literally like black diamond maybe double black diamond jeep trail all the way down last chance canyon i think this is called it's just been stupid but i think we're almost out of here yeah it's been lots and lots of boulders cone dry lake is located at the base of the el paso mountains near last chance canyon modern mining of salt began here in 1911 this dry lake looks like the perfect place to get some epic drone shots, but you will soon find out shortly that the dry lake bed wasn't so dry. As the scorching sun beats down upon this vast desert expanse, I find myself heading towards the dry lake bed with plans of just getting some quick drone shots and then heading to our originally planned destination to enjoy higher elevation, cooler weather, and mountain peak views. This plan would soon come to a halt as we quickly sank down into the mud. Alright, so we have been stuck here for a few hours now. It's almost 4 p.m. We posted on a bunch of Facebook recovery pages. We have a guy named Chris from AV Overland Supply rolling out. Uh, he's about 40 minutes away. He has a two-wheel drive van and some kinetic rope. Um, wish us luck. There's also a guy named James 
Uh, he's trying to find another guy to roll with him. He has a kinetic rope and I'm assuming a four-wheel drive Tacoma. He just said he has a Tacoma. So we'll see. Um, I'm basically stuck up in the mud all the way to my leaf springs in the back on the driver's side. And um, the rear axle is buried. So yeah, it's 102 degrees out here. We're not having fun. And uh, this is the worst trip ever. Check it out. Just freaking buried, man. But uh, yeah, don't think we're gonna make it to uh, Jawbone. So maybe you guys are gonna have to wait next video but we're eight, we are going to show you uh the recovery so wish us luck after being stranded in the desert for over five hours i was starting to feel lightheaded and tired even though we were drinking plenty of water and the ac was still running inside the truck the heat was taking a toll on our bodies we hadn't eaten a solid meal since breakfast and we didn't feel like cooking our ramen noodles in this kind of weather and situation Luckily, Chris and Dwayne arrived about 45 minutes later and we devised a plan to get my truck unstuck. After saying a quick prayer, we hooked up to Dwayne's truck and gave it an attempt to pull the truck out of the mud. Parking brakes. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, man. My uh, parking brakes off and the truck's in reverse. I think we moved a couple inches. After three attempts to pull the truck out, we didn't get the truck very far, so we decided to use Hector's winch to see if that would give us more leverage against this unforgiving clay. Let's try just the winch first, yeah. All right, so uh, we now have a, uh, I'm now winched up to uh, F-150. Hey, do you want a daisy chain them? I got a shovel in the back of my truck. Feel the gas pedal because I have mud on my freaking flippy flappies. I'm in reverse, man. Go oh, give it some gas. Good to go, man. I'm uh, I'm out of here. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Come see me at AV Rubble <laughs> Supply. We got some edit roll some stop. All the recovery gear you need. Thank but you. But big thanks to Hector and I do what I could with the winch. I know the winch kicked him all like three, four feet. Yeah. Big shout out to AV Overland Supply. I'll put a uh, link in the description for his uh, Instagram or his website. like 50 pounds a piece. 
No? Look at that. Yeah. Mud won't even come out. Thank you so much, bro. Dude, thank you so yeah. much, man. I'm so glad we got you guys out. Yeah, yeah bro. Sorry we couldn't get to you guys sooner, bro. Hey. Yeah. Later. All right, you guys, so that is gonna wrap up this video. My wife and I and Daisy are gonna get on the road. Thank you to all you guys who rolled out and, and helped us get unstuck. Uh, if you guys liked this video, I know it didn't turn out the way I thought it was gonna turn out, but uh, yeah, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next Sunday. Peace.